Hello, hello. So today we're going to be taking a look at how planes actually fly. So basically, planes fly because they have wings. So thank you all very much for watching. Um, no, seriously, this video is going to take a look at what the wings are actually doing, which causes a plane to fly. Now, I'm no physicist, so please forgive me if I say something out of turn during this video. So firstly, we'll need a wing. This shape here represents the cross-section of an aircraft wing also called an aerofoil. This view is if you were looking at it from side on, i.e. from the wingtip looking towards the plane. So one of the most common but incorrect theories which is taught is something called the longer path or equal transit theory which is based on the Bernoulli principle. So the explanation that this theory gives is that the airflow, the air which is hitting the wing, splits as it hits the front of the wing. The air passes over and under the wing and rejoins at the back of the wing at the same time. So for this to happen, the air flowing over the top of the wing has a further distance to cover over the curved surface, therefore it speeds up. As the air speeds up, it causes an area of low air pressure above the wing. The air which passes underneath the wing slows down because it has a shorter distance to travel and this causes high air pressure below the wing. The end result, this theory states, is that it's this pressure difference above and below the wing which causes the wing to move upwards, and this upwards force is more commonly called lift. Now there are a few aspects of this theory which are correct, but it doesn't tell the full story. So I'm going to give you the correct answer first and then try and explain what's going on after. So the correct answer is that lift is created because a wing or an aerofoil is turning the airflow and directing it downwards. It's not a pressure difference which creates lift. So here comes my attempt at explaining it and again physicists please be gentle with me. So the airflow hits the front of the wing and splits the same as before. Also Bernoulli was correct when he talked about the difference in air pressure above and below the wing and he was also correct in saying that the air which flows over the top of the wing speeds up. Now the air which passes over the wing kind of sticks to the top of the wing and follows the curve of the upper surface. This sticking phenomenon is known as the Coanda effect. As the airflow leaves the wing at the back, it leaves at a slight downward angle because of that curve. That downward deflection also affects the air which passes under the wing and also turns it in a downward direction. It's this turning of the airflow which causes lift. You can generate more lift in two ways. The first is by increasing the speed at which the air passes around the wing. This is generally attained by simply flying faster. You can also increase something called the angle of attack. This is the angle of the wing relative to the airflow. So in this example, you can see that the wing is pretty much pointed directly into the airflow. However, if we increase the angle of attack, you can see that the wing is tilted backwards. This creates more lift because the airflow is turned downwards at a sharper angle. Now, there is a danger to increasing the angle of attack. If you increase that angle too much, there will come a point where the airflow cannot turn and follow the top of the wing. When this happens, the airflow will separate from the top of the wing. This is what happens when an aircraft stalls. There is no steady flow of air over the wing, therefore the wing stops producing lift and the plane begins to literally fall out of the sky. Now there are a couple of devices used on aircraft which help increase the amount of lift that a wing can generate. The main one you have are flaps. The flaps on any aircraft are designed to increase the amount of lift that a wing can produce by increasing the surface area of the wing. This allows a plane to take off and land at slower speeds, yet still produce enough lift for safe flight. The downside to flaps is that they create a lot of aerodynamic drag, or you could think of it as wind resistance. Normally, flaps are constructed and integrated into the overall shape of the wing. Then they extend downwards at the back of the wing. This increases the curvature for airflow around the wing. On modern aircraft, you will likely see something called a slotted flap. When extended, these have a small gap between the wing and the flap itself, where air can pass from underneath the main wing, through a small slot and over the flap. This helps the airflow over the main wing stay attached at higher angles of attack. 
Now, if you really want to solidify your understanding of flaps, I'd recommend looking at some pictures of aircraft flaps online. You'll notice that the flaps are essentially mini wings. They have a similar shape and structure to the main wing. Now, another device which is most commonly found on commercial jets is the leading edge slat. This device sits over the leading edge or the front of the wing and can extend forward to increase the surface area of a wing, again causing the wing to produce more lift at slower speeds. These can also have a slot where air passes underneath the leading edge slats and then flow over the main wing. As with flaps, these can be retracted to reduce the amount of drag or wind resistance, allowing a plane to fly faster. Now there is one more device which is normally integrated into a wing, however its purpose is to reduce the amount of lift that a wing produces. These are the spoilers. So these are normally flat panels which extend up from the top of a wing. They are called spoilers because they spoil the airflow over the top of the wing and reduce the amount of lift it produces. These are most often used on landing to ensure that an aircraft touches down safely and to prevent it from taking off again. They also have a secondary effect that they create a lot of drag or wind resistance, assisting the plane with slowing down to a safe taxi speed on the ground. They may also be used in flight to help a plane descend faster, however they will only be partially extended. The main issue with this is that they create a lot of turbulent air which causes the wings and the plane to vibrate. You also get a sort of a rushing wind noise, so both of these effects can be uncomfortable for passengers. So, I hope that explains the basics of how a wing produces lift. Now, of course, there is a lot more to it. You know, understanding how atmospheric pressure plays its part in keeping the airflow connected to the surface of the wing, understanding things like lift coefficients, but honestly, the physics behind it all gives me a headache. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more aviation-related videos in the future, hit that subscribe button to make sure that you receive any new videos as soon as they're released. Speaking of new videos, the next one will be very appropriate for this time of year. It's going to be all about ice and the dangers that it poses to aircraft. So for now, thank you all very much for watching. Take care out there and I will catch you all later.